Today, I'm in Basel in Essex. I'm here to visit my boy Francis, who's cooking a banging meal. He's originally from Ghana, spent most of his childhood in Sweden, and now you could more or less say he was raised in London. Today, Francis is cooking us a Swedish staple. I'll give you a clue. You can get this in Ikea. Trust me, Francis is one bangs. I've got my fork and knife and I'm ready for a big munch. Man, there stop. Yes, yes, come on. Come through, man. Yes, come yes. Welcome to this food bangs. Cheers. Listen, right now, I'm with the COO, the CEO, the main guy, all the titles, <laughs> all the titles of Francis, we got Francis yeah. from Let's Do Humans. The main guy, listen, honestly, it's a pleasure for you, for, you know, to be here, yeah. for you to invite me. Listen, I'm, I'm blown away, man. No, I mean, it's a, I love it's, your podcast as well. It's a pleasure for me being here, man. Obviously, we've worked together previously on, yeah, yeah. on a couple of, on the podcast before. And, yeah. Um, Checking out your new stuff with less, like this food bangs is yeah, just amazing. Yeah. So it's a pleasure you hitting me up, man. I mean, I I, I didn't know I was a professional chef like that to be deserving <laughs> of your channel, but do you know what I mean? I'll take up any challenge, any opportunity, Listen, anytime. Listen, bro, so I appreciate you it, do your thing, fam. Yeah, you throw it, it down, you do your thing. Trust yeah. me. Um, honestly, thank you very much for having me. Yeah. You know, we're with the Black Viking, the Come Black on. Thor. Come on. You know what I'm saying? You soon find out why we're calling the black, <laughs> black Viking. The what's black this? Viking. Yeah, 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 they're thinking, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> um, tell us what went into your dish, man. Oh, yeah, so what we have here is um, it's just your standard Swedish meatballs. Mm. You've got your gravy and then your um, lingonberry sauce as well. So mm. it's, it's like a basic Swedish staple diet that everyone knows globally, yeah. thanks to obviously IKEA, and mm. they're making it one of the most popular meals when. When it comes to like um, Swedish branding and brand brand so brand in the in the UK because oh. most people tend to go to IKEA for like flat packs, but when they go there, they always pop down to the meatball section just to that's why check on these to Swedish people. Yeah. That's the only reason I go that's to IKEA. To be honest with you, man, it's, it's always down to the meatballs. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what we're having today, man. We're having your standard Swedish meatballs with um, some potatoes and mm. sauce as well. Yeah. Love it. Talk us through the process. What mm. what went into each component? Okay, so. Initially, I usually start off with a meatball, mm. and uh, when I start off with a meatball, uh, I fry onions mm. in a pan, mm. make sure that they get nice and brown and goldenish, mm -hmm. and then um, I mix the onions with your usual uh, meatball ingredients. So right. I mix it with the mince, with the right. egg, right. the breadcrumbs, and then the seasoning as well. So, but the seasoning comes down to the individual, it's about your flavour, your, your palate, what type of seasoning you want your meatball to be. You can have the standard with your black peppers and stuff, or you can go all in, go all continental African on them and just put in like all the seasonings in the world just to get that flavour in. <laughs> and um, once you've got that, mm. you let it set for a bit before you roll it into the meatballs. Right. But whilst you're working on the meatballs as well, you've got the, um, this, well I'm using sweet potatoes today right. for this particular dish. Mm. You, you bang that in the oven for like 15, 20 minutes or so. Yeah. And then you start working on the sauce. So in regards to the sauce, I use the same pan that I just fried the onions in. Yeah. That's just to get the flavouring going. Right. And then you add your flowers, you add your beef stock, and mm -hmm. just your regular sort of like um, mm -hmm. sauce material, and you let that simmer for like six minutes or so. Yeah, yeah. And bang, you got that. And then you just top it off with the lingonberry sauce, which is just like a berry. Yeah. That um, the Scandinavians like to use and turn into like a jammy type of sauce. So right, right, that's right. That's what you got on the side of the dish. Yeah. Nah, bro. Honestly, it's big. It's it's, it's very nice, man. I, I'm enjoying it. It's got a kick. The meatball has definitely got mm. that, that spicy twang. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Some like, additions added to it that's not usually added into the meatball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it has to be that, done. Is that how you've adapted? So how have you adapted this dish then? And why have you adapted this dish um, to your own liking? So the adaptation comes from like, sort of like the seasoning that I see my parents using at home. So coming from like a Ghanaian background initially, right. mm. um, we tend to use a lot of seasonings, mm. like a lot of peppers, mm. a lot of all purposes. Right. A lot of spicy like stuff. Yeah. We like to use a lot of spicy ingredients. Mm. And what that does is it's kind of like, it, it kind of, it kind of like brings you into a familiar territory mm. into like season that we're used to having in our, in mm. our regular foods mm. or in our meats and stuff but mm. if you were to go to Ikea for instance it wouldn't be that stack full of like hard spicy seasoning right. so it's just me adding a bit of flavour as in regards to things that I'm used to I'm accustomed mm. to in my culture so mm. yeah that's how I spice up by adding some of the hot stuff in there now I can feel it still all, that, all that's missing is shit up you know what I mean that's all Trust that's me. missing you that would have been authentic if you got in yeah. <laughs> That's what Ghanaians have, like, shito, 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 you know And it mean? goes with anything. That's, mm, that's the good mm, part. Mm, it goes with absolutely everything. Yeah. Mm. Now, it's good, though, man. This is banging. 
one criticism, mm. I think too much sweet things going on. You know me. Yeah. I'm from Ghana. <laughs> you know, I'm not used to sweet, sweet. It's the sweet potato with yeah. the jam. Mm. And then, yeah, man. It confuses your palate. It confuses my palate. If it's you know? meant to be sweet, it's meant to be sweet. Yeah. <laughs> if it's sweet, give me a cake. <laughs> if it's spicy, give me shit up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Keep it moving. Hot sauce. You know what I'm saying? But no, no. Mm. The, the meatball is definitely very nice. I'll definitely mm. steal the recipe. No, definitely. I'll, I'll, I'll be glad to pass on. I think mixtures in flavours between like sweet and savoury it, it works sometimes mm. but if you're not used to it it, it comes yeah, across yeah. a bit weird because I mean I was I was never used to it used to mm. it like that mm, 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 until like I, I moved to Sweden obviously and I lived there for the majority of my younger years mm. and then um, it's just something that you become accustomed to right. so now I'm kind of used to that whole idea of mixing the two together but yeah, 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 historically yeah. it's not really something that everyone is accustomed to or even mm. like in the mm. first place but mm. if done right it gives you a good flavour yeah is that how they mm. have it in Sweden then yeah, with the sauce, yeah, 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 sauce yeah. Yeah, it's a staple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but it, meatballs, are they really from Sweden? That's the interesting story, actually. That's so, the thing. a lot of people automatically assume when they hear meatballs, they just think Sweden. Yeah. They think Swedish people invented meatballs. This is it. But it's not, actually. Where's it from? Um, so, the story is that it's from Turkey. Right. So, in the 18th century, mm. I think his name was King Charles. Mm. He was a Swedish king at the time. He travelled to Turkey and. Um, he picked up on their culture, where, you know coffee, which is basically made off of like leftover meat. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they used to make them into meatballs in Turkey. So he brought that tradition over to Sweden and the Swedish people adopted it and right. took it over and now it's become like a Swedish thing. Why did he take it to Sweden? Uh, yeah. Well, he, no, he, he's from Sweden, so he, t- he took uh, the tradition back to Sweden, to Sweden after right. his trip to Turkey. Right. Yeah, so, and then the Swedish people obviously over adopted it and stole it and now it's become like a Swedish known thing. And, um, it kind of originated from Turkey. That's insane. Yeah. That is mad. Mm. You see, this is why I like you in the show. Bro. Yeah. You know, I would never have had a clue, you know. Mm-hmm. I just kept thinking Sweden, IKEA, meatballs. Yeah. <laughs> those, those are my reference points. Yeah. When I think of you know meatballs and. And a lot of people does. You're not. You're not the only one. Mm. Even I mean, I only learned that a couple of years myself, mm-hmm. like a couple of years ago, because I was always under the like. I was always under the idea that meatballs are a Swedish thing because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's always been associated to Sweden. Mm. And that's the funny thing about cultures, cultures can shift. Yeah. And ideas from cultures can be kind of like adopted and then owned by someone else if you're not careful. Like, mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. All, all of a sudden, soon Kente is going to be a Scottish thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that's, that's how culture works sometimes. It shifts, it shifts and it's constantly it adapting and evolving. Definitely. Evolving for sure. Mm. Um, let's talk about, you know, your your sort of your journey because mm-hmm. you say that obviously you, you identify yourself as Swedish but mm-hmm. originally where, where, where are you from? Um, I actually, so I identify with all the three countries the three, that, right, minus that I'm associated with because I think, I think that's very important culturally. Right. I think one of the issues that we're kind of facing in today's culture is our identity. Everyone's kind of like when lost in long, regards to where they belong, yeah. Yeah, where their heart is, where their soul is mm-hmm. and where their culture is mm-hmm. and that's, that's one of the big issues and the thing is when you when you find yourself being in a position where you're kind of battling along those three fronts, mm-hmm. you're never really settled, you're never really at peace, mm-hmm. and you never really know where your loyalty should lie. So you're mm-hmm. constantly battling, not just all the other elements, but you're battling yourself because right. your own identity is kind of lost. Yeah, yeah. But I respect all the cultures I've, I've, I've been involved in, all the mm-hmm. countries I'm in, and I love them all equally. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. Maybe Ghana a little bit more, yeah, let me not lie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, was, I was born in Ghana. Mm-hmm. Um, Moved to Sweden around the age of five. Mm. Obviously, parents went to study um, mm. abroad and so forth. And then at the age of eleven, I moved to London. Mm. So it's like I've been through the three transitions where, yeah. like, I was born in Africa, had right. that whole experience. Right. Went to Scandinavia as they as they and, and at that time when I went to Scandinavia right. in the early what nineties or whatever. Yeah. Like being the only black kid in like primary school mm. and then coming into the UK from being the only black kid in primary school to right. being in a classroom where there was only one white boy. Like that's that, insane. You know what I mean? So it's like I've seen all the various like culture shifters and and what that does to one's identity and what it does to your understanding of how the world functions as well. For because real. how people behave towards you in Ghana and in Sweden and in the UK is completely different. Right. The experiences with others is completely different. Right. So that's that's been my kind of like travel journey and my cultural experience. Right. That's so. interesting. You, you say it's completely different. Mm. How different is it? So, for instance, in Ghana, mm. there's no there's no black identity crisis mm. because black is the dominant. Right. You see what I mean? Yeah. Like, you don't go to Ghana and be pro-black. Yeah. 
you because just are. you just are black, and you don't, and you might not necessarily understand their lived experiences of other blacks in places where they're not the dominant culture. Mm. You see what I mean? Because mm-hmm. when you're not the dominant culture, your experience is always going to be different. Absolutely. Regardless, Absolutely. whether it's negative, positive, whatever, it's mm-hmm. always going to be different because you're not seeing everyone like you. You're not experiencing mm-hmm. culture the way that you're used to. Mm-hmm. And then going into Sweden, it was a bit of a shock initially because now I'm in a classroom where there's no black faces. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it was just me and my, my cousin, Regina. Right. Like, right. We, we were the only like black kids there. Right. Do you know what I mean? So, but... The funny thing is, with that experience, it wasn't really negative in the sense of our treatment. It was more negative in the sense of like our paranoia and feeling yes, misplaced. Yes, yes, yes. Do you yes, know what I mean? Yes, yes. Because they, they felt more intrigued by us. So it's mm. like, where are you from? Oh, like, who are you? This right. type of thing. And we're kids at this time. Do you right, know what I mean? We're, right, right, we're right. Really like in our early, early infancy. Yeah. So we, we used to play this game a lot where we used to tell people like, oh, we're... We're American, or like we we we've got cousins and family in America, stuff. So, because America was like a cool culture yeah, to yeah, yeah. to look at and, and stuff like that at the time. So that that was the games we used to play. But mm. there was a story apparently that the first week of school, I used to like run away from school a lot and just run home because I was I must have been hella confused by all the all the blonde hair, blue eyes. But eventually, I managed to assimilate and and get accustomed to the culture and understand mm. the people. And once you learn the language of the people as well. You, you start building a connection because language is what put, brings us together. It's one of the unifying factors. For real. So For real. that was my experience there. And then coming to the UK, it was just wild. It's just like, whoa. Now I'm seeing like a whole bunch of us. Yeah. And now I'm truly experiencing like what it is to, to feel black. Do you mm. know what I mean? Even though Sweden, there was less black people. But in the UK, the, the history and the, the, the relationship between blacks and whites and Africans and Caribbeans, mm. there was a history there. A lot had happened. So... Yeah. It, it that deter that's a determining factor in regards to how people see each other right, right, and right. how people relate to each other as well. Right. So yeah, that that was that was an eye opener. That's crazy. Um, because when when I when I got yeah, because I remember when I was in Ghana, mm. like I remember never f- asking myself or questioning my identity. You never would because I was raised when I was raised in Ghana. That's mm. what I mean. Until I came to this country, mm-hmm. and I remember my mom always tells me this story. She's always like, "Rah." I remember when you first came to this country, you like, yeah. my first question was, why are there white people here? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. I had never seen a white person mm. before, ever. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that was a shock to me. Mm. So again, I kind of relate to the fact that you felt almost misplaced and mm. you felt like, where do I belong? Now I've really got to dig yeah. in here yeah. to sort of show people my culture whereas in Ghana it's easy you just you walk around and it's, yeah it's, it's dominant culture that's dominant the culture yeah. and when we talk about places and mm. destinations locations the mm. first thing that comes to mind is is food yeah. like you yeah. know obviously let's start from the beginning mm. from when you know from Ghana mm. what are your fondest memories of Ghana when it came to um, I mean I still food. go to Ghana quite a lot now so yeah um, I'm still very in tune yeah and um to me, one of one of the beautiful things about like um, the African culture per se, which is slightly different to the European culture, is, mm. is the manner in which like we engage over food. Mm. So, for instance, like if you go to like a bar or mm. a local bar on, mm. on, on the street in, in mm. Ghana, for instance, you have like a whole bunch of people sitting outside mm. and sharing a massive bowl of food and eating with their hands. Obviously, mm. it's a bit different with COVID now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're gonna yeah, have yeah, ten yeah. men dipping their hand into a bowl nah, of fufu nah, nah, and that. Nah, you know nah, what nah, I mean? Nah, but nah, 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 nah. the thing is. Is that whole like is it, it becomes more like a communal thing? Yes. So with food back home, it's like you don't just pick up your plate and go to your room with your Xbox and you're picking at your chips yeah. or whatever. Like yeah. there is a communal thing. Yeah. You know I mean, there's there's even a saying in Ghana. Um, I, I don't know. I forgot to say in tree, but they so whenever you receive your food, you always have to walk. Yeah, you welcome everybody yeah, yeah. in yeah, yeah. to to join you. Mm. Basically, you're you're saying, look, I've I've received this food now. You're all welcome. You're all welcome. Like, come join me. Yeah, come join me. It is is it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna come and join mm. you, but it's a part of the tradition of mm. when you receive your food. Mm. Is it's a part of like the the pleasantries to invite everyone mm. around you. That's the communal side. Yes. Of things. yes. And then they respond by saying, now nah, go and handle yeah, this. You've got it. You got this. Do you know what I mean? This is. You. I believe in your source. I believe in your source. <laughs> you, you, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you got this. Like you, yeah, you can, yeah, you can yeah, sort yeah. this out. And that, that's one of the beauties of it. And people don't realise the subtleties of that tradition in itself. Exactly. And whenever I see people do it, I'm like, right, like, 
there's something deeper like beyond this than just mm. inviting people into mm. the food mm. so it's like every time you receive food you're not just digging in you're like yo guys the fr- is, you're all welcome yeah 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 and you yeah, wait for yeah, them to yeah, respond yeah. before you eat yeah you know what I mean yes yes it's that coming of coming together it's a communal and thing communal you know what I mean? it's a family thing and that's that's one of the beauties of like a food in Africa look I mean Swedish people are lovely people definitely yeah lovely people you know um, met a few people out there mm very welcoming very receptive mm. how, how was it when you met you people <laughs> from united kingdom <laughs> okay so in, in sweden um as a kid in the morning like when when i'm going off to like i don't know like when, when you're just walking in the street in the morning right everyone used to say hi to each other so mm. like hey little you know hey 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 or whatever hi 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 everyone be waving hi bye whatever mm. and um you'll be smiling and stuff mm. But when I came into London, there was one incident that I had, I think it was like, I think it was, I was on the train on Central Line, mm. and I was like, I don't know, about 12, 13, and um, I was trying to wave to some random people, mm. and the screw face that they gave me, I'll never ever forget this, because <laughs> I'm thinking, oh man, I'm seeing my fellow my fellow brothers at yeah, that, yeah, 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 I'm like, hey, like, they're thinking, who's this, this yeah, Donny fan, you know what I mean, who's this goofy guy just waving yeah, and smiling, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like, what do you want, do you know what I mean? Mm. And I, I don't know if it's a big C thing or if it's a London thing or if it's just like the whole confusion where everyone sticks together when, mm. when you're in such a multicultural city and mm. like people become less friendly, they become colder, they become icier yeah. as well. So that was a weird experience. From there I realised that no, I'm not going to go around smiling no, no. and waving <laughs> at random people in that's the central it, that's line. It, that's it. it doesn't go down. It might not be interpreted the way that I wanted yeah, to. So yeah, yeah. I definitely found the country to be colder in terms yeah. of like people's personas and behaviours. Absolutely. Absolutely. We obviously, we, so we've covered basically mm. your international yes. sort of a journey. <laughs> Where's home? Oh, where's home? Like, damn. Is it is it Ghana? Is it Sweden? Is it London? Okay. Home, home, home. Home is definitely Ghana. Mm. Let me just get that clear. Mm. Um, and the thing is, home truly became Ghana. Why? To me, in in the last maybe like five years, why? Why? Um, and to me, it was it was lack of connection. Mm. So, a young lady. But the thing is, let, let me just make this clear: all three places are home. I love all three places. Right. Like I've got a Swedish passport, and inside my passport it says "Born in Ghana, um, um, Swedish passport, but UK citizen." Right. So I've got permanent residence here in the UK. Okay. So it identifies all the three nationalities within one passport. Yeah. But when I say home is Ghana, because obviously one, I was born there. It's the language, or it's the language of my people, the origins of my people. Do you see what I mean? My parents, great grandparents, grandparents. Like it's the origins. It's where my story started. Do you know what I mean? Because without Ghana, my story wouldn't have been here in the first place. So Ghana is where the heart and the soul is. Mm. But then all the other countries is a part of what's made me as a human being. So right. even though as much as I love to claim Ghana, mm. even when I go Ghana, they they calling me a white boy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you see what I mean? I get that all the time. Fish and chips boy. Fish me. and chips boy. So it's like that 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 dissidence. It's like regardless of how much I claim Ghana, they know that culturally I've been influenced by all of these other places. That's why I have to accept all those places because mm. I can't lie to myself. I'm culturally influenced by all of these places. Mm. Do you see what I mean? As much as I know the Ghanaian language and I eat the food. Mm. People can feel your culture sometimes, mm. and if the locals in the country that you're trying to claim can feel from a mile away that your culture has been tampered with, <laughs> you know you have to then just admit it and accept, yeah, yeah, just accept, accept the yeah. whole swing of things. Yeah. But my heart, my soul is definitely in Ghana, and I can see myself settling in Ghana because mm. in the last couple of years I've been going back there more regularly. Mm. I've been understanding how Ghana functions. I've been I've been connecting, reconnecting with mm. the Ghanaian soil. Um, so Ghana will definitely say it's home and then definitely London then right. Sweden because yeah. uh, because even though I stayed in Sweden first mm. I spent more time in London I spent most of my life in London mm. I spent 20 years in London mm. so London is home London's where, where I got my education London's mm. where I gained all my life long term and life term friends and London's where I've, I've learned my craft I've understood everything mm. do you know what I mean so it's like the mindset the programming is London mm. and obviously Sweden is also the love because it was where it kind of started after Ghana, so I'm connected to all three. But if I was to have a chart like a league, mm-hmm. Ghana at the top, and then obviously UK, London, and then um, Sweden. But yeah, I respect all three. I, 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 I love that. Listen, Francis. Obviously, you got your Less Two Humans podcast. As yeah, well. yeah for those who don't know, Francis, his podcast is big. He's, yeah. He gets big guests on. I appreciate he does it. it 
on a regular now. Yeah. Um, I'm it's doing fan. well, man. Yeah, appreciate it. It's doing it, really well. The podcast it. game. Um, yeah. You're doing well, man. We're, why did you get into it? If it's just very briefly. Yeah, so um, Let's Do Humans podcast is basically what it says on the tin. So mm. it's about doing humans. It's mm. about communicating. It's about engaging with human beings on, mm. a, on, a, on a human level. Just mm. trying to understand each other. Mm. And um, it was birthed out of my own sort of like mishaps within the education mm. system. I didn't feel I gained much in school. Mm. I didn't think I understood a lot. I wasn't able to... Um, connect with the education system properly. I didn't do great academically, mm. and that's just because my, my style of learning and dyslexia and all the other stuff that wasn't identified when it was supposed to be identified, mm. it wasn't tackled. But as I got older, when I started communicating with people, and I realized mm. that wait, this I learned great this way. Mm. I learned great having mm. conversations mm. and connecting pe- with people on a real level where mm. it's not like superficial or overly structured. And that's the reason. That's the sort of like reason behind me starting the podcast. Mm-hmm. I thought, okay, I'm gonna go and go on a journey of like self learning and self growth, and I'm just gonna share that journey and put right. the content out there. Right. And that's what Let's Do Humans is about. So that's why. So people usually ask me, "What's your niche?" And I'm like, "I don't everything. do a niche. I do everything. Everything. Like I'll talk to anyone who I find interesting or who I think has a story yeah, worthwhile yeah, yeah. listening to or engaging yeah. with, and potentially learning from and sharing that experience mm-hmm. of learning mm-hmm. with others. So. Mm-hmm. That's less you humans. It's, it's open for anyone and Trust everybody that has a story. Listen to it. It is so, so sick. Do you check that out and engage, man. Let's Listen. Yo, this has been probably the most yeah. informative. Well, I appreciate it, man. My brain just went into corners. <laughs> I felt like one minute I was in Ghana doing the Azonto. Just take your coach and everywhere. Bruh, the next minute I'm in Sweden, shivering. <laughs> shivering. We're dancing then, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dun, next dun. minute I'm in London. I'm on the Baker Lou line yeah, train. Trust me, just Bacon. Trying to avoid people and trying to avoid eye contact. Yeah. Yeah, so. Listen. Francis, always well, a pleasure, bro. I appreciate that, Listen, man. that definitely. was a banging meatball. No, nah, Those meatballs, please, when you can, send us the recipe. I will do. I'll, I'll, I'll pop that through, make sure you share that with everyone. Appreciate that. Listen, you've just listened to This Food Bangs with the main man from Let's Do Humans. Come mm-hmm. on. Um, make sure you check him out. It's Fred Bennett. And that's it, really. Bang, bang. <laughs>